Hi, this is Mrs. Han, and I'm going to help you um, go through this gizmo, Evolution, Mutation, and Selection. So before you um, get started, there are some prior knowledge questions, and these are some vocabulary words that you should be familiar with. Um, you can read this over, and I think you can all answer these questions. Then you're going to get to the gizmo warm-up and think about how long a parrot could survive in Antarctica. Um, obviously not long. And so we we would say it's, it doesn't have a, a high fitness for that environment. So fitness is how well an organism can survive and reproduce in an environment. It doesn't really mean how strong that organism is, but how well it can survive in a particular environment. And so um, we're going to go ahead and start and look at the, I'm going to try and reset this. Okay, so the, uh, the average fitness, I, I'm, I messed up with these, these colors. So when you go to the gizmo as it starts, okay. The average fitness is right here. So it looks like that it, it describes it as 50%. It's not great, but it's not bad. It's right in the middle. Um, and then what background color, so we're gonna, we're gonna move the sliders around and we're gonna see what background colors can give us the highest fitness. So we'll look, we want this to go as high as possible. So as I move the red up, it, it looks like my fitness of these, of these little, bugs gets higher and so I think when the background is white uh, obviously these are these are all white so their fitness becomes a hundred so the background that results in the highest fitness I could say um, red to uh, 55 green to 55 and blue to 55 so that would be um, that would be how you answer that. And then what question are, um, what question would be the lowest fitness? Well, let's see, I'm gonna guess if we move these sliders all the way to a different color, um, this, the fitness would go really down to zero. Because look at, they're not, they're not, um, they would stand out too much. This this is not a good environment for them to survive. Whereas when this when the environment was white in the background, then they could they could blend in and they would have a very high fitness. Okay, so you could say you could say white or black um, instead of putting all those numbers. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to set red to one hundred and green to two fifty five and blue 250. And the mutation rate will keep the same. Okay, and then, uh, so an organism's traits are controlled by genes. Genes are located on rod-like structures called chromosomes. So these are like the chromosomes right here, and these are the, um, the genes, and each type of gene is called an allele. So different versions of genes that code for the same trait are called alleles. In this gizmo, there are three genes. For each gene, there are eight possible alleles. So the different alleles are W, R, G, B, C, M, Y, and K. So these are the um, these are the genes like this top gene, but there's two different versions you can get. You can get a white one or a green one. This middle one is a gene, but there's two different alleles you can get. Same with this one. All right, so we're gonna hold our cursor over one of the insects. And I guess I had to click on it. There are, here are the, here are the chromosomes. And then these are the alleles. So um, what alleles does this insect have? Well, that's gonna be pretty easy. It's just www. Okay, and the, these alleles are what we call the genotype. 
the phenotype or what uh, the color is going to be. So the phenotype of this insect right here, it tells us red is 255, green is 255, blue is 255, and the color, it looks like it's white. Okay, so then we're going to go ahead and run the gizmo. Make sure the slider is all, oh, not that one, the slider, this speed is the slowest. And we're going to click play. And you'll see insects move to the left in pairs. So they're going to, insects will move here, pair up, and then they'll have little baby insects for offspring. So it says, as soon as you see at least one offspring with an oval around it, click pause. And let's take a look at the genotype and phenotype of that. So I'm going to go ahead and push play. Birds eat it. They mate. Have more babies. Oh, okay. So here I see um, some offspring with a circle around it. And so I'm going to go ahead and see why it has a circle. Oh, remember all the genotypes originally were www, and this one has, um, has a green allele. One of, the, one of the alleles, one of the forms of this gene is now um, green so it looks like there was a mutation so you're going to go ahead and write its genotype and phenotype the genotype is going to be the letters so it'll be ww wg ww phenotype you're going to go ahead and put the the color what uh, number red what number green and what number blue and you're going to explain how is this different from the non-circled offspring. How is it different from this one? Okay. So then you are going to read that this is caused by a mutation. Change in a gene happens by accident um, when a cell's chromosomes are copied. So how might mutations introduce variation into a population? Okay, how might this mutation introduce some differences in this insect population? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move the mutation rate to 3. So now there's a higher chance of mutation. Here we were had a very low chance of mutation, so that's why you didn't see a whole lot, these two. Look at this one has a mutation right here. We're going to increase the mutation rate to 3. And then we're going to go ahead and run the gizmo for another 10 to 15 generations. So I'm going to move the speed up. But you can sort of see what's happening at each generation. They pair up. The offspring get eaten by birds. The remaining ones pair up and have more offspring. And those get eaten by birds. So it's kind of this interesting thing. And at this point, it's hard to really tell which which ones are surviving um, if the birds are kind of noticing more or not noticing others but it seems pretty random to me but you definitely can see more mutations happening um, because of our higher mutation rate okay so 10 to 15 generations we'll go ahead and pause it um, I'm gonna pause when the parents are ready to have an offspring. Okay, so. All right. Mm. Okay, let's do it one more time. Okay, so here are the parents. And um, you're going to have find two parents that have four different chromosomes. Okay, so you want... Um, like this, this one has the same, so that's not going to work. Okay, so we want this one. So this one has two different chromosomes, and we want to hope that this one has two different ones than the than this one. Yeah, there's no www over here, and there's no gyw. Good. Okay, so these two parents have four different chromosomes. So we're going to go ahead and put them in for the sequence of the parents. Um, let me see. 
see. Okay, so parent one, I'm going to go ahead and put, I would put CWW and then right here, and then I would put um, YWC for its different um, it's chromosome two. And then parent, parent B, I would put WWW for chromosome one and GYW for chromosome two. Now we're gonna see what their offspring look like. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and Oh, I can't remember. Was this it? Was this the one? Yeah, I think this was the one that had our parents right here. Um, so you're going to go ahead and put the chromosomes of each offspring. So this chromosome has CWW and GYW. Okay, and you're going to see where did it get its uh, that chromosome from? Was it from um, a allele 1, A1, or B1, A2, or B2. So you're going to note this, this insect got this chromosome from one of the parents and this chromosome from one of the parents. So you're going to try and um, show what, which one it got it from. And then um, answer the question, what, what you notice. And for number seven, you're going to think about, OK, what's another source of variation? So one source of variation is that these mutations are happening. But what's another source of variation that's causing these offspring to all be different? They have the same parents, but what's causing them to all be possibly different from each other. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna just kind of briefly look at the others without going into too much detail because I think you get the gist of it now. But you're basically gonna go ahead and um, set the background color to this red color by changing the numbers, changing the mutation rate, and you're gonna see if the background is this red color, what's gonna happen. Um, to the insects that are uh, surviving, okay, and then um, you're going to go to look at um, the generation, at, cer at certain generations, um, you're going to do it two more times, and write the average fitness, which is right here, and the survivor fitness values. Okay, you have to you have to um, divide it by ten. Let me see if there's anything else I need to say about that. Okay, so here, um, let's say you do generation. Let's say this is generation twenty one, and then you're going to go ahead and put what the average is, and then you're going to put the fitness values of all the um, all the offspring. So there's going to be 10 percentages here, and then you're going to go ahead and do the average of these 10. Okay, so this could be generation 21, this could be generation 22, and this could be generation 23. And what do you notice? Okay, for this one, Again, you're going to like reset everything, um, and you're going to look at how a population changes over time. So for this, um, at each generation, you're going to go ahead and put the average fitness. So if I were to kind of reset this whole thing, and um, I would do the average fitness, which would be here, and then you would do the fittest of the fittest inv individual. So you would go and kind of, um, let me see. This is 100. Okay, so let's say we do generation one. Oh. Mm, okay. Uh, a 
Okay, we'll say generation one. And then we'll, the average fitness is going to be 53. 53%. And then um, the fittest of the fittest individuals. So these, I think they're all going to be the same because they haven't really had any kind of mutation. As I go over each one, notice it's the same um, fitness. So I, that's going to be 53. That's easy. Okay, and then the phenotype of the fittest, so, you know, obviously it's going to be this, 255, 255, 255. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for 25 generations. So let's see. Oh. So here for 25, I'm going to go ahead and see who has the, who is the most fit. So this guy is 80. Um, where's the individual fitness? Oh, right here. Sorry. Okay. Individual fitness is 80. 81, 75, 81, 82, 81. 82. Oh, 86. Okay, 86. He's the winner so far. 81, 75. 81. 82, 82, 81. Okay. This one was 82. This one is 86. So I would say the average fitness is going to be 80. And then the fittest looks like it's 86. And the phenotype of the fittest is going to be this. Red, 128. Green, 255. Blue, 128. Okay. And I'm going to keep running it for all of these generations and try and stop it and just see what's happening to the fitness of um, what's happening to these insects over time are they becoming more fit and what color do they seem to be um, changing to over time not individually changing because it's not like this one is going to change but uh, over the over generations what's going to happen to the population okay i think that's all all right if you have any other questions please reach out and i hopefully this is not too tedious for you <laughs>